Jeremy Bryden for Core F Squared Software Solutions. Today we'll be talking about the final release version of our nurse scheduling problem uh, program. So right in front of you, you see the standard login screen that we've shown before in the beta version of the application. And things internally have actually dramatically changed. So even though visually they may look appear, internally there's much more encryption going on. Uh, we have a lot of more built-in security. Uh, SQL injection prevention, uh, and a lot of also helpful tools for the end user. So I'll go ahead and log in here under my username and administrator. Let's see. Uh, during this time, we gather and batch a lot of information from the server and we send it straight to the client. Right now, the server is running locally, but the database is actually in California. Uh, so that's why there's that overhead in a real-world environment. Again, this is an application for a class at Penn State. In a real-world environment, this database would be on campus for that hospital uh, to speed things up. So we can see that the original feature still exists. You could go ahead and add a user, modify a user, or remove a user. One of the biggest differences, though, as I mentioned, is the helpfulness of the application when it comes to errors. So if you put in a name, but you leave all the other required fields open, it'll go ahead and not only give you an error, but it'll also explain where the error is and what the error is. We'll go ahead and click OK there. Modify user has the exact same behavior. If you select a person and go ahead and change data by either putting an inappropriate number in a field that doesn't require digits, or you put an alphanumeric character in another field, it'll go ahead and complain before submitting the data. And of course, remove user, fully functional, just select whichever user you want, and you could click remove user. Groups are very similar. You have add, modify, and delete. Uh, add still is just taking a group name and group description, as well as modify can go ahead and change any of those elements. But this time, though, we're able to very quickly add a user or remove a user from a group. And we do this all uh, with some special logic going on in the background, meaning uh, any specific user can't be overcommitted to too many groups, uh, and also there's other special rules that we'll go over towards the end associated with um, the degrees of the nurses and requirements that are needed to be met before a user is put into a group. So for example, if a nurse has a degree in, and you can see all of these licenses listed here, as CNA or LPN or LVN or NP or RN or NICU or CR CRNA. Uh, if you go ahead and create a group and specify these requirements, it'll only allow you to add members that have those requirements. Now here you can see the schedule itself. We're using a very simple J table that we overloaded just so and then we could customize some of the graphical outputs. Uh, we have columns for the seven days of the week. We order everything based on a 24 hour cycle could go ahead and look at the previous week or the next week. You'll actually see that this next week is yet to be generated, and we'll go ahead and do that towards the end of the video. If you go back a few more weeks, you'll see that there's been different mutations of the schedules that have taken place uh, while we're developing this. We just dumped uh, a few examples onto the database. Now, each individual user can also set up a preference, and a preference is specified by a series of days, start times, and durations. So a specific user might be able to only work Monday through Friday, starting at 8 for 8 hours each day. But if that schedule can't be met, then maybe the user actually prefers a completely different schedule setup, such as Wednesday through Friday, Monday and Sunday, starting at 12 noon. Uh, so there's a lot of dynamic uh, issues associated with this. So we allow the user to specify their own day of the week preference, the hours they want to start with, and then also the duration. They could go ahead and push that onto their uh, preferred shifts list, and they could also resort that list any way they want. They could also remove that preference uh, later on, and all of these preferences are attempted to met to a certain degree. Uh, internally, there's a number, uh, a percentage, that says that if a preferred shift meets, so if a possible shift meets 80% of a given user's preference, then we'll go ahead and commit that user to it as long as other requirements are met. Within plan schedule, we have all of the original features. We have the actual schedule list. Uh, you'll notice that, and again, this is simply because it's a university course. We just don't have enough time to cleanly design the UI. But you'll see that there's a lot of helpful information about each uh, shift time. 
So you'll have a user ID if it's uh, a non-negative number. That simply means that it's an actually dedicated, so it's an actual set schedule, while a negative number represents that it has yet to be computed. Uh, if you actually click on View Schedule, you'll see there's a little warning label here saying that the server is yet to refresh the schedule, simply stating that there are parts of the schedule that have yet to be computed. So again, we go back to plan schedule. You could look at each of the possible schedules. You could see qualifications in the rightmost column. Normally, they would be the qualifications that I mentioned before, such as the NP nurse qualification. Uh, but here, we just have them listed as digits, since that's the internal representation under the database. You'll also see preferred nurse ID is negative numbers. All that means is when you go ahead and create a new shift, you could either have no preference, or you could specify a specific nurse. Uh, in this example, we'll take Abraham Lincoln, since we do enjoy our presidents. We'll select a, a given date, a given start time, a specific duration, as well as that qualification that we want this person to meet. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a university course, so we're very, very tight on time. One of the subtle things that we never thought about in the very beginning is, what if we want nurses or requirements that include several requirements? Meaning, what if a nurse needs to be both an LVN and an NP? rather than just an NP or just an LVN. Uh, it wouldn't require that much work. We could go ahead and change the tables on the database to represent them as strings, and then we just append these to the string and parse them as common delimited strings. Uh, to actually generate the schedule, you could go ahead and generate now. Remember, everything is done server side. So either you could generate it now, the server will launch a new thread to start computing things. Once it's done, it'll give the administrator a nice little message, as well as remove this warning. And if we go back to plan schedule, you could actually set up the computing to be done later at a specific hour. So if we want this to be computed at a low usage time, for example, uh, 10 p.m., we could go ahead and select 22 hours, which is 10 p.m., hit generate later, and problem solved. Uh, everything is launched as a batch process. Some smaller things, the rules are finally complete. Uh, if any of these rules are broken, so for example, if we only want nurses to work at most 30 continuous hours, then uh, the administrator will be given a warning and then asked before committing that schedule to the actual formal schedule system. Uh, and also there are simple booleans that say specific warnings. If the administrator wants to be warned about not meeting qualifications, they could go ahead and be told about that. If you click settings, you could change the server IP location as well as change the user's current password. There's also a few smaller subtle things. So for example, here in the corner of your system bar for OS X and in the bottom right for Windows, the application is still running in the background. And if we hit log in, go ahead and ask us to log in again. So I'll log in as a standard user, which is gonna go ahead and lock down the, the user interface to prevent administrative privileges. And the user can go ahead and look at the current schedule, change their own preferences, but they're not able to plan schedule. All they're able to do is view schedule and preferences. So in the end, I think we had a, an extremely good success with the programming project. One of the biggest difficulties is, of course, we didn't have enough manpower to complete a lot of the smaller details we didn't think of at the beginning of the project. We absolutely learned that one of the biggest frustrations with these kind of projects is getting the correct type of uh, requirements from the customer. We found that it's extremely difficult to get exactly what the customer wants, and then also how to translate that to a visual design that they're uh, acceptable with, that they're okay with. Uh, you'll notice that there's some small GUI issues. That's because we never had anyone uh, with GUI, so graphical user interface experience. So a lot of these are just programmers who needed to put buttons for certain functionality, so we slapped them up. Uh, on the GUI forms themselves. If you hover over any of the buttons, though, we really put extra effort to document everything as much as possible. So if you hover over the Schedules button, it'll start giving you some information via uh, what I call IntelliText, uh, or maybe it's uh, Hover Help Text, uh, whatever you call it. So yeah, that's that. This is Jeremy Bryden. If you have any questions, please email me at jbryden at cores2.com.